Hello and welcome to another episode of Infrastructure Matters. We're here at IBM today and we're talking all things processors. Susan and Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. So let's get started. Ladies first, Susan, tell us a little bit what you do for IBM. Yep. Um, so I'm the director of IBM Z Processor Development here in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, and then I'm also the overall product owner for Telem2 for the mainframe processor that we're announcing now. So I started that about four years ago, leading a team of 800 global um, engineers cross-discipline as we went through concept and HLD, HLD implementation, bring up, and now we get to announce. So it's Fantastic. Exciting. So hey, Chris, tell me what you do for IBM. I design processors. I'm a distinguished engineer. Um, I, I help lead and make decisions on what do we put into our next generation mainframe processor chips. So, Susan, you mentioned it, Telem 2, first, second generation of the Telem processor. Telem was a seminal moment for IBM, first time you'd launched the processor and started to message that ahead of the system. We're now on to the second generation. Tell us a little bit about Telem 2, kind of the journey IBM's been on with the development. Just really set the scene for us, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so a lot of folks know the IBM Z mainframe and, and some don't, but regardless, you interact with it daily throughout your life. You know, every time you swipe a credit card, it probably runs through a mainframe. 70% of the um, financial transactions run through it. And sometimes I feel like a little, you know, IBM sales pitch doing that, but it's cool, right? I mean, what we work on, our technology matters. We use it every day. It's impactful and meaningful. Exactly. Um, so knowing that we run the, the high volume, high transaction, um, always need to be, be available systems. So in, in commerce and in airlines and banking and in credit cards, that kind of sets the stage for, for what we do, for what our pillars are that, that we looked at for Telem, for Telem 2, for going forward. So a couple of those areas that we looked at, um, like I said, the industries we support, you've got to be reliable. So Chris, I think you quoted the other day where a mainframe's down, what, one one hour every 11,400 mm -hmm. hours, which is... 11,400 years. Sorry, years, Jeez. which is pretty impressive. That puts in context the eight nines availability claim that you guys have got. Exactly. Just can take, it's hard to put that in and frame that, but that puts it in, yes. puts it in real context. Yeah. yeah, so looking at that reliability, the scalability we need, um, security that we need, which is super important, and performance, you know, that's always one of the pillars we're looking at as we design. Um, sustainability is a big one lately, certainly with society at large, but also coming back from our clients, right? There's only more and more data and process it faster and faster, which is at odds with and do it greener and with less of a footprint. So that's pervasive in what we do, where we can cut down on power, where we can consolidate workloads. And then the third one, which is a really fun one, is how can we, with all this data going through, how can you gain insight, put some, some analytics, do some analysis of that, um, and put some intelligence to that data there? And you could take that off the mainframe to do it, but one of the things we're known for is security. So you want to keep that data on there and get some intelligence from it. So semiconductors are a hot topic in 2024. NVIDIA's blown up, Intel, AMD capturing the headlines. Lots of people are talking semiconductors. They're on the sort of nightly news every day almost with AI capturing the, the sort of public domain. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people think IBM and semiconductors, but that's obviously not true. Tell us a little bit more about how we should be thinking about IBM and semiconductors. They should be thinking about it like they go hand in hand. We've been in the semiconductor industry since its inception. We've got our research team working on new advanced nodes, with semiconductors, you see announcements all the time in two nanometer, or three nanometer, or whatever the next node is. And that's be. cutting edge. Two nanometers is yeah, far ahead as anybody is. Correct. So we've got our research team doing all of that work. We've got a research team working on packaging and advanced packaging and chip stacking and all sorts of other areas. We've got our, our internal team that's designing the chips on those nodes and figuring out how do we put more stuff on a chip than we've ever done before. And then we've also got our tools teams. Our, our, our packaging team to do design for us, our card teams, everything. We are completely embedded in the semiconductor industry and we build chips and put them out and put them in our systems. They're the foundation of our systems. 
And Susan, we were talking about it off camera, the size of your team. Yep. I think that surprised me at least. But just picking up on what Chris was saying there, the size of that team and the breadth and of the scope. Yeah, I mean, like I say, we've got 800 hardware developers just on the Telum 2 processor alone across mm. logic design, verification, physical design. Um, when you look at all of the portfolio of the chips we do, we've got 1,200 global hardware developers working on that. And like Chris said, you know, that's just the hardware development part. So all the tool support of that and the technology and packaging and, 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 and. We've got a very, you know, several thousand person global team. So we're in 2024. What are we 10 minutes in? Mm-hmm. We've not met. I think I mentioned it, AI, but I went past it really quick. It'd be wrong if not to be recording something in 2024 and not talk about AI. We were talking about it off camera. Yep. You guys are doing a lot in this space. Chris, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Telem 2 from an AI perspective, because I think not a lot of people think mainframe, think AI. That's changing you know, 200 plus use cases, lots of customer adoption now. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing in AI with Telem 2. So I'm going to take it a step back and say what we already did in Telem, mm-hmm. right? We put an on-chip accelerator in Telem, right? It was dedicated. It's not, we didn't have it distributed in the cores. We had it in, in a dedicated on-chip accelerator, and we've added to that. We've added support for different uh, data types. We've added uh processing horsepower to it, right? It's a it's a better design than it was before. We've got the remote uh, capability where that cores on one chip can access the AIU on another set of cores. The AI accelerator is a better way to say that. Um, on another set of cores, um, on, the, on another processor throughout the drawer. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Mm-hmm. We're also putting an, another chip into uh, a set of PCI cars and building that out into our IO subsystem in the mainframe. So that, that takes it another order of magnitude of, of compute horsepower. So we've got the wafer here with us. <laughs> this is where we geek out. We were talking about it off camera. I mean, just to put some of this in context, mm-hmm. what was it, 24, 24 miles, of, miles of wire in 18 yes. different layers? I yes. got that right, guys. You'd be impressed. <laughs> yes. But tell us a little, I mean, Chris, there's some deeply nerdy, geeky stuff here. <laughs> We were, t- we were joking around. I mean, we're, so, re- we're recording this talking about the Telem 2. We've mm-hmm. got to nerd out for a moment. So can just you give us the speeds and feeds? Just, you know, what am I holding in my hands? What does this mean? What does what, what what can this thing do? So what you're holding in your hand. So that's, that's Telem 2, 5 nanometers, 32 billion transistors on that thing. Like you said, 24 miles of wire. Um, speeds and feeds, it's running at over 5 gigahertz, right? 5.5 gigahertz. It is absurd how fast these things are running and, and how much we put into them, right? As I mentioned earlier, right, the, 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 when we were talking off camera, right, the data processing unit that we've added onto the chip, right, it is amazing how much content, how much capability we can put onto these processes these days. Eight cores, 360 megabytes of L2 cache distributed. Um, PCI interfaces, uh, whatever. It's just, it's just. So insane. that ca- that cache number. Yeah. When we were talking about it and we were prepping for this, I think that for me is one of the things that stands out. That number's so unusual, so different, so so out of sort of the realms of what we see with yeah. some of the other processors. Tell us why that's such an important part of the IBM story with Telem Two. Three hundred sixty megabytes on one chip. Right, it's 36 megabytes per core. It's all about our workloads, transaction processing, data, uh, uh, database management. Right, having that pool of cache to load in all that data and then access it as you're processing a transaction or figuring out whether this is fraud or not. Like having all of that access to all that data is super important for the, the bread and butter workloads that, that make the mainframe what it is. So, one of the other things we talked about, you were talking about the accelerator. I think it's worthwhile digging into that. That's, this is something new that's coming with Telem 2. You guys are calling it Spire. I think, Susan, you mentioned it really quickly, but I want to go back to it. What's Spire? Why is it important? How does it fit into this sort of context of 2024 and what we're seeing with AI? Tell, tell me a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, so as you know, we introduced our AI accelerator on Telem three years ago, and as clients 
frankly play with that and see what they can do with that. And we've got you know over 200 use cases of what they're doing. Two trends have come back. We need more compute power and we need to be able to host different models. So we've got, as you say, Spire. So that's our PCIe attached dedicated AI accelerator, inferencing accelerator. Um, 75 watt form factor that it fits in and developed in Samsung 5 nanometer. And so the two things that it can go after, like I said, more AI compute power, so 300 tops per chip there, um, but it also supports generative AI. So we can um, now run the Watson Code Assist, for example, um, on IBM's Granite models. Uh, what we can also do, because we have the AI accelerator we mentioned before on Telum 2, you can run those two in, in concert, right? This ensemble notion of ensemble AI. So the transactions running through the mainframe, you can get the low latency, lower energy footprint, um, uh, AI compute from the accelerator on Telum 2. And if you get a low enough confidence score there, you can go out to Spire there where you can host the larger model, you can get a more accurate answer. And so, like I said, running those in concert together in this ensemble AI, you get the most accurate lowest latency, lowest energy footprint answer. I think cool. that's fascinating for me, this concept of ensemble. You're building stuff into Telum 2. You've also built a connectivity there with the card and the accelerator. Yep. I think that's just fascinating that you're going to be able to, for thinking about it from a fraud use case, be able to do some scoring. Hey, I need to do more mm -hmm. and be able to do that sort of in the transaction because of the way you've designed the system. Exactly. Yep. So... This system's got a second life. It sits within the mainframe, but it also sits within IBM's Linux-only systems, the Linux one. Tell us a little bit, of, Chris, about what we can expect from this Telum 2 processor and the AI accelerator when we see that in a Linux-only system, a Linux one. So Linux one is all about total cost of ownership, consolidation of workload onto that system. Um, and tell them to just accelerate that, right? Improve performance, improve capacity, more memory. We talked oh, about the cache. Correct, that the cache is exactly. So you end up with these massive consolidation ratios, 20 to one, 30 to one, whatever it happens to be, because the processors are able to sustain utilization at 90%, 99% in some cases, where you don't have to have peak capacity demand capabilities baked in. You don't have to have idle compute sitting around. So you can really onboard a tremendous amount of workload onto these systems. And then your software licenses go down, your energy costs go down, a whole host of things get better. And again, total cost of ownership goes down. And that's really the value proposition of Linux. Now. So Chris, one of the examples of what you've just said there is what City's doing with their MongoDB yeah. estate. Tell us a little bit more. So it's it's that consolidation play. They, they take workload that they've got running out in a, in a data center somewhere and they figure out that if they put it on Linux One, it's more efficient. It's more compute efficient. It takes up less floor space, takes up less energy. And they're taking advantage of, of that processing, that transaction, those caches, that memory, right? Really leveraging what we bring to the table with Linux One. So let's start to bring this home. I think fantastic conversation. Always great to get hands on with the wafers and the chips. Maybe Susan, start us off. Give us a couple of things that are the key takeaways people should be thinking about. We tell them to. Yeah, I mean, back to the the kind of three pillars we talked about at the top of the of the, the episode here. That certainly the reliability, scalability, security, performance. That's always um, something that we focus on, second to none already, but always improving on that. Um, sustainability has been a big one for us as we design through Telum Two. Right, outright power savings are. Another benefit of all that consolidation is, you know, lower energy footprint there. Um, and then the last one is the AI capabilities that we have on here. Chris talked about it with um, Telum 2, but we've got the Spire chip there as well for even more AI compute power there and to be able to run new models. So I'd say all three of those. And Chris, what would be those takeaways from you? So it's the same takeaways. I, I want to emphasize that Spire chip. I mentioned it a bit ago, right? The amount of compute we're talking about putting into the system, right? 30 peta ops in one of our test systems that we're putting together. I mean, we're talking about an enormous amount of compute that's going to be in a mainframe. And the ability for our clients to take advantage of 
that AI in terms of what they want to do with it, right? We always talk about, we were talking off camera, right? The, the banking transaction sort of examples is sort of the bread and butter. But the array of use cases that our clients are coming up with and exploring and taking advantage of, I'm looking forward to finding out what they come up with as they, as they, as they explore that space when, I, when they have all of that horsepower in their hands. Well, it's been a fantastic chance to go deep for me to nerd out. Really appreciate you taking the time chatting to us. You've been watching another episode of Infrastructure Matters. We've been with IBM today going deep on all things Telem. There's lots more to find out, so please click on the link in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, <laughs>